This is what we're going to talk about today. Basically, uh, we are a company. Um, uh, we do strategy, marketing, and communications for technology organizations with a special focus on open source. The interesting thing about this stuff that we're doing is that it's taking us currently into places that I never ever would have imagined. Uh, analyzing the feature set of a CMS, which is a highly complex product, um, learning how to compare systems against each other um, and talk about them in uh, intelligent, useful ways. Um, we have a mining company that has come to us to ask them help position and promote their drills and diggers and stuff. And um, it turns out that when you're working in a CMS, like most of you have something to do with a CMS here, right? Uh, we've been comparing CMSs lately, and we've come up with uh, roughly 700 features that we can sell as part of a CMS. There's no other product that I can think of that has 700 features, and I'm certainly not selling fighter jets, so. Huh? But it turns out what you can compare and contrast and create messaging around something like our open source CMS, um, so doing a five product lines with 50 product variations each for a mining company looks like kind of an easy day compared to, compared to selling you know, left to right and right to left text and stuff like that. So we try to communicate in a way that doesn't look like dull old marketing. Today we're going to talk about how open communities create value. We're going to talk about how to communicate authentically. Uh, we're going to talk about how we do that. So what we think authentic communication is, um, empathy, how to bring that across, clarity, and trust. And then maybe talk a little bit, if we have time, about what you're up to and what you'd like to know. Our company is called Open Source Strategy Partners. Who? Um, this is Tracy Evans. She is a hotshot. MBA and my business partner. She uh, has more than a decade of experience at real companies. So big enterprise, startups, and all sorts of things. So she has actual education and formal experience about stuff that I've kind of picked up along the way as we're going. But she's much, much better than that stuff, at that stuff than I am. Um, how many of you know me and have seen me present before? Cool. So the stuff that I've been doing in the last five or six or seven years, um, I came to this partnership as a communication guy, as someone who uh, knows and understands developers and has ended up, um, I've ended up a lot like taking what we do as geeks and explaining to business people what that is and why it's valuable. And we are turning this into something like a system and something, uh, it's becoming more and more repeatable, and uh, it's pretty exciting. We have a full-time team, uh, team member, Heather, Heather James. Uh, she's also been in Drupal a long, long time. She has an incredibly low UID on Drupal.org. It's pretty great to be working with Heather. It was something I had always wanted to do um, over the years. I'm going to put this so that it doesn't go to sleep anymore. So we're open strategy partners. The, the thing. Here's how we put together. Um, here's how we put together. Me coming from what source of communication and Tracy coming from the business world. <laughs> it's you. Is it still me? It's still you. Oh, all right. You'd think I would have figured this out after all this time. Okay. Um, When we, when we communicate with each other honestly and clearly and with good intentions, i.e. in open source uh, communities, in the issue queues, building companies together, working with clients, when we communicate well, um, we connect with each other, right? We're here because that works. Um, and these connections create what we're calling community and the, di the discovery that, uh, that Tracy made coming from business to open source, basically, is that these communities generate incredible business value. Um, who is paying for their life and their family and, and so on with uh, this crazy thing we call free software? I hope everybody, almost, you know, yes? <laughs> Most people in the room, right? Um, and the journey that I went on was, hey, I did, like, I needed a website, and then I learned Drupal, and then, and then I really got incredibly excited about what we do with it. And then I've 
figured out that, you know, we're generating incredible value and that there's a whole world of business out there and I learned to talk with those people and so I came out of op to open source and, and, and came to, to what business is that way. Um, and so we're, we're convinced that there's this idea that there's a ton of value in what we're doing and, and that needs communication. It's, it's unusual. Um, the, the, the open source economy is not uh, into, doesn't make intuitive sense to people who, who think that you get a thing for some money and that money equals one thing and then, you know, to get two things you need two monies and so on, right? We're doing a very new thing. The kind of economy that we operate in hasn't been around for more than 20, 30 years in, in, in history, right? Yeah. So, we as Open Strategy Partners, we figured there's a ton of value in there and when you can unlock it and when you can explain it to people and when you can help open source people explain that to business people, for example, it'll be easier for the business people to give you their money to do cool things for them, right? And, and that's kind of what we're here for. Um, also, interestingly, Tracy reads things like the Harvard Business Review <laughs> and, for fun. And um, there are articles now coming out in the last year talking about sharing and talking about open values and talking about all this stuff. Um, so, so this is becoming real to those kind of audiences. Yeah, the business world is finally catching on to what the open source community has known for a while. So. Authentic okay. communication. Uh, yeah, so the, the concept of authentic communication is <laughs> something that came out of uh, some of the earlier conversations that I had with Jam that eventually snowballed into our business. And it was learning how um, he was taking the stories within the open source community and telling those stories as, a, as an effective way of communication. And as a traditional marketer, um, this was simple but brilliant. And we've based our whole business on it, essentially. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so the, the idea behind authentic communication is that it's both compelling and accurate. And the way that we achieve that is through um, basing, basing it on empathy. So, understanding the, who we're trying to speak to, understanding their needs, their, their perspective, um, using clarity, providing extremely clear messages in the, in the channels that we speak to and uh, the language that we use to, to communicate uh, with that audience. And we build trust by avoiding bullshit. <laughs> And, um, and also amplifying the, the voice of the community, which is what, um, you know, that was the, the conversations that I had with, with Jam about his experience. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we pull this apart now, we're going to go through these three sections. If we pull this apart and we talk about what empathy is, uh, empathy, the, the word pathos in Greek means to suffer, um, and then, uh, how many of you speak German? Anybody? Yeah, okay. Oh, we're in, okay. We're near the border, right? So, um, so um, mitleiden. What's the Dutch word for that? What's mitleiden? Right. So I suffer with you, right? So I have pity for you. I have sympathy with you. So pathos is this suffering. In English, we don't use suffer in that context, so I'm glad we're in Holland because it's easy to explain. Um, so sympathy, sim is with, I am with you, um, and I suffer with you. So I have sympathy. Um, and then if I really don't care about you or about a thing, I have apathy, and a, ah, the prefix a ah, means without, pathos, I don't care, sympathy, apathy, then we have antipathy, anti, pathos, I do not like it, I do not like you, it's more than just not caring, right, it's that it's actively, I don't like it. So what does the word empathy mean, and what does it mean to you, how would you use the word empathy, anyone? And I have a microphone to throw. I need, I really want to volunteer about like in the zone, like four or five meters from me. 
You could just throw it and see who catches it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Everybody's like. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, empathy. Um, empathy. Empathy. Um, some form of compassion, but not really. Compassion is great. Compassion is great. And it is actually come with, right? It's the Latinate with uh, a passion, which is the same as Medelide, which is the same as sympathy and empathy. And yes, it's in that zone, right? So all the pathos words are really interesting. Um, one sort of dictionary definition of empathy is the ability to identify the thoughts or feelings of another, the capacity to understand someone else's point of view. So um, we talked about it with one of our coaches of, a lot, is that I can project myself into someone else's existence and think about uh, what they might need. So there's effective and empathy, which is a, a neural response built into our bodies. If I see you in pain, if I see you happy, if I see an emotional situation, I will often feel that to some degree. Um, and that's effective empathy. And it's a, it's a part of being alive and being human. Um, the second type of empathy is the cognitive empathy, and that's the sort of empathy that we're using in our work that we're talking about today. Um, I want to put myself in your shoes. I want to, uh, you know, uh, s try and understand what your perspective is, try and understand your needs. So whoosh, when we're trying to sell something to someone else, it probably really helps us if we think about what they need, what their problems are, rather than, dude, you have to check it out. We implemented PSR 7. It makes the, 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 the bouncing around the packages so much better. And then, you know, I'm thinking about writing this new logging interface and it's gonna be, and do your clients care about our toys? Anyone? No. <laughs> they do care that uh, if we build a PHP fig compliant system that we can swap in or out pieces to keep their technology up to date longer and customize it to do what they want down the road, right? Think about their needs. So, um, this, no, clicker, give me the clicker. clicker jam. Oh, see, wait, you were supposed to be enjoying that the whole time. Just take it in for a second. Because I, like, I thought that it was a really cool slide. Right, so look, marketers love this stuff. This is all the terminology that I live and breathe. This is my zone, this is where I, I know how to live. This is the space I know. Um, but how effective is that for a room full of developers? Is that good for you? Not so much. Not so great, right. But if I'm talking with a business person, right, they're gonna, they, they're going to get down on this. Like, oh yeah, so like the competitive analysis is the case of the, you know, they were talking about the buyer's journey and the, for then the second phase of the, then in the reacquisition of the retargeting and the, you know, and the yeah. products and it's going to, poof, they love that, right? Now, most of us in open source, right, uh, a lot of us have to deal with, like we have to convince someone to work with us. We have to sell them the idea that we can realize their project and we have to build their project and we have to convince them to stick with us when the deadlines go too long and when the budget goes over a tiny bit and we have to sell what we're doing at the same time so it would really behoove us to be able to put ourselves in their shoes to, to, so that we could work together better. So all of this stuff, right, which is ugly and hard and full of Excel. Depends on perspective. Now look at this. this. These two things, in the end, answer exactly the same questions, and this is how we like to think of this, right? Are you solving a problem that someone cares about? Who should know what sort of problems you're solving? Who else is solving that problem? And how are you solving it better? That's what you need to explain to someone to sell them a thing. You don't need to talk about Right? So when you're marketing your companies, when you are looking for contributors to your module, when you need maintainers, put yourself in someone else's shoes. 
figure out what they care about and answer those questions and you'll be way, way, way down the road to being a great marketer for your, your whatever it is that you do. Empathy. Empathy, I think I wrote empathy in context because uh, I guess that's the same as putting, putting yourself in their shoes, right? Imagine, yeah. imagine being in their world. So there we are, that's how we use empathy in marketing. I clicked, I clicked, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I'm behind on my notes, of course. <laughs> um, so we do a bunch of different kinds of communication work with clients. We do investor marketing, um, we do uh, sort of strategic product development marketing. Um, open source contribution marketing. Right, yes, we're, we're working to increase open source contribution for one client. Um, so when you know that these are the questions that you're answering, if you want to go and develop your pitch, um, the art of persuasion is a very old one. Um, and we could go into this um, a lot longer, but there are three sort of, uh, three tracks that you need to be prepared on. Okay, um, logos, that works very well in Northern Europe, in uh, uh, monochronic cultures, uh, facts and figures, knowledge, analogies, examples, so case studies, references, uh, uh, performance data, you know, uh, how many solutions are already built, um, speak to someone's logic, right, speak to the power of numbers, do that, it's pretty cold, but... Um, so, no, 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 I don't need to click, thank you. So, logos, so these are the old, um, the ancient Greek art of rhetoric. Uh, logos, speak to, my, speak to my reason. Then, ethos, convince me of your character and credibility. So, logos is like, Drupal 8 does all these things, and here's case studies of it doing it, and we can do decoupled or we, whatever it is that they need, right? Logically, we can do this. Logos. Ethos, tell, show me you're a credible source. Make me, help me believe you. Well, we've got these five case studies and these uh, three customer references that you can call to say how great it was to work with us. Uh, make yourself believable. Logos, ethos, and then we're back at pathos. Um, Work with them, do a discovery workshop, um, choose the setting where you're going to have the conversation and paint a vision of what their project could be. If you understand their business model ahead of time, where they are now and where they need to be, right, which should be a part of your discovery workshop, paint a, paint a vision of their business future for them, make them hungry for what their company could be in three years and then tell them how, right, your Drupal solution is going to get them there and you've got them. Understand what they need, appeal to their mind, show them that you're credible, and then appeal to them emotionally, and you've got it. So, the empathy map. The this empathy. is an example from our investor marketing workshop. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, the work that, this is for this, okay, got it, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so, um, with, while working with a couple of startups to help them convince investors uh, to invest in their startup, we wanted to take a step back and think about all of these principles that Jam just talked about um, to help us convince the investors um, to, to, make that, to make the investment. And we came up with the idea of the empathy map. And this is normally kind of a workshop exercise with lots of post-its on the wall and lots of scrap paper and standing and throwing around and, and crazy ideas. Um, but we wanted to share this idea with you um, to s demonstrate or to show a practical example of how we take that concept of empathy and, um, and apply it in this particular communication case. So um, this is sort of a, a journey up the mountain, as you can see, and we start with how you grab their attention, then how do you create interest in the concept, um, how do you build trust in the founders, 
then trust in the business model in order to get to the investment. And, oh, two clicks. There we go. <laughs> and so we can, um, we can give away the game here and um, demonstrate sort of along the journey what we're trying to show in the words that we use, in the, the stories that we tell to um, create a connection with the investor. So, um, you know, in the beginning, you just need to grab their attention. So you just need to be relevant. You need to leave a positive impression. Um, creating interest, they need to, the first thing is about recognizing that there's an actual problem in the market space. Um, and they need to understand what your solution is to that problem. Um, and to know that it's relevant in the market, is it timely? And that kind of thing. Um, and whether or not they're currently investing in that space. Um, and the next sort of, the, the bigger leap is actually creating trust in the founders. Uh, this is one of the biggest themes that we've seen consistently across the clients that we've worked with, um, is that the, the team behind the project it plays a huge role in, in the decision making and creating the trust in the people behind the project um, is core to everything else before they'll even look at the details of the business model. So, um, you know, they need, they need to know that they're, they're trustworthy and capable um, and specifically that they can execute, that they come from the, that they come from the market space where they're trying to solve the problem. Um, and these are the types of things that we build into the stories that you tell when you're writing the blog posts or you're creating presentations. Um, this, these are the things that need to resonate with, uh, with the audience. And you notice, can you leave me? Just leave me, thank you. Um, and the second phase, the second phase, we can already see this is logos, right? And in the third phase, we go, phase, we go from logos like the intellectual, this guy has run good companies before perhaps, trying, t so logos ethos, then getting them to believe in that, right? Yeah. And then the whole, I think the whole curve represents a, a yeah. creation of passion, right? Because it takes a lot of excitement for me to, to actually open up my bank account and give a bunch of you exactly. crazy open source freaks money, right? And once they've made the connection with the people, with the founders, with the team, then they can look at the business model and um, you know, get into the details, try to validate the problem in the solution space, look at the market a little bit more in detail, check with the numbers, um, and, and do all that, but not before they've established trust with the people. Um, and then we get to the investment. Uh, and yes. two, yeah. Um, and this is just a very specific case in uh, investor marketing where we're mapping artifacts along the journey um, and the types of assets that you'll want to think about um, and you can reflect back on the types of messages that you need to convince them all along the way and make sure that those exist in each of these assets uh, that you're putting out to the investors. Um, so things like you know, to grab attention, that's anything that requires, you know, less than a minute to consume your, you know, your one-liner, your elevator pitch, um, making an email uh, <coughs> interesting and captivating. Uh, getting an interest uh, in the concept is your pitch deck and your one-pager. Um, the trust in the founders, these are, you know, things like social profiles and whatnot, but um, it's very much about the face-to-face -face contact, that personal connection, and seeing, um, seeing the, the, the founders and the management team um, give presentations and, and active in the community. And then the business model is obviously the, the detailed business plan and the financials. So that's a great example. Uh, what do we got next? Okay, now we have the interactive exercise. Right. So uh, one thing that we constantly deal with, constantly promote, constantly work on in, in Drupal and open source is getting more people to contribute, getting more people to support. Um, and uh, we all know contribution is not just code, right? It can be sponsorship and mentoring and marketing and lots of other things. But um, we thought we might try and work through like a quick exercise with you. Um, what do people, 
what do we need to do to attract someone's attention to contribute, uh, build their interest, um, decide that it's the right project maybe, um, and, and get them to contribute uh, contribution. So we could talk about like what sort of formats, where we tell people what they need to hear, um, and uh, we have no idea how to do this, so who wants to kick it off? Nobody. Okay. Let's get a project example. Who in the room wants more contributors for their project? Yes. Taco. Taco. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I'm Taco from Open Social, the distribution that lets you build uh, your own community software. Um, actually, we have a huge uh, demand for contributions. We cannot do it alone. We currently funded most of the project ourselves. Um, it's, it's really an amazing project. We have over 1,200 community sites active at the moment, um, which most of them we don't know, but one of them is, for example, opensource.net, the open source, uh, uh, global open source uh, organization is using open social, as they say, okay. it's the best community project out there. So look, so that's, I think, in the third column, right? Trust in the product. 1,200 yes. sites, including opensource.net. I'm climbing up the stairs. The mountain. Yeah, right. So first we need to start with grabbing the attention by understanding what open social is. Uh, I thought I was like playing a home, uh, home uh, game here. <laughs> 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 yes. So uh, indeed, open social is a free uh, open source community building platform. It lets you build your own community out right. of the box. Right. So let's do a keyword strategy. Right? I need something. Well, I am a business person, by the way. That's why I talk like this, out of the box. <laughs> Stuff like that, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> we could we could turn this. We could use the we could use the right hand side of, of terms if you want to instead of the left one for you. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so what are people looking for when they when they want to, you know, what are they searching for in the search engine? How, that maybe that's how we're going to get their attention. They need some social software, right? Yes. And you you're going to convert them. Here's the idea: we're going to convert some uh, NGO group who wants to, they need some sites, and we're going to convert them f to contributors by the end of, uh, you know, the next five minutes, right? So what, right. Are, what are they going to search for? So they will start searching very broad, as in uh, social community software or social business platform, usually not on open source. We try to, you know, get them in very broadly. People don't care that much about open source that we might think. So yeah, they would just search for open source, uh, or uh, I mean social community, and we would pay for the keywords to get them to our site. Okay, so in the investor example, uh, the attention getting is an elevator pitch, where, where I stalk you and I bother you somewhere, or I'm trying to email you, or I know someone who knows you. Um, in trying to get someone to adopt my software and then contribute to my software, I actually think a keyword strategy is really good. So keyword strategy, Buying some Google AdWords, that seems like a really also, great start. Also, first interaction with meeting Taco at Drupal Jam. That's right. grabbing the attention, opening, also, opening, the, opening the conversation, right? Notice that, notice that Taco's totally on message. Like The first thing he said was his name, his product, and uh, several successes with it. So like, he's hoping that you're going to be excited about that. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> moving up. Yep. Creating interest in the concept. So uh, next level to learn a little bit more, where, what, um, what points of contact would they learn a little bit more? Would it be through a blog post, a demo, a? Yeah, we got it all. So we have a website called getopensocial.com. Um, we wanted an active domain name, like a small thing, but it does help. And there, yeah, we do it all. We have great blog posts. We have uh, feature presentations. You can get a free trial for 30 days without a credit card. And we have intercom, very important. So we have live chat also on the site. Aha. Uh -huh. So you, like, you get pinged when somebody comes there, and you can start a conversation with them? Yeah, they can ping us. Less annoying. OK. All right. Okay. Uh, who here has built a, an online community, and built the software, or built the human part of it? No one. Come on. Yes. So, so you're looking to build a new one. You, you, you were searching for it. You found Open Social. You went to the website. You read a couple case studies. What do you need to take the next step?
<laughs> All right. Pretend that you pretend that that's an awesome idea. So, tell us your name and what you do. Um, uh, my name is Kuhn. Uh, I work at uh, RTL. Okay, cool. So, you need to do this thing again. You found Open Social, and you read a blog post and a case study. What, what do you need to like, take the next step to get a demo, to install it somewhere, to, to use it? Um, uh, uh, an estimate of the cost. Ooh, that's a pretty uh -huh. advanced... That's pretty far along. Okay. Yeah, but you yep. said I already had the demo, and I already. No, had no, no. Like, like you read some blog posts and you saw what's on that site, but. Okay, uh, I want some uh, some more um, uh, concrete or some uh, information, not just all the shiny stuff that you see uh, everywhere. Uh, you need logos. Words. Your yeah. logos needs convincing. I need, uh, I need logos. Facts uh, and figures. And, and, and in depth. Uh, okay. On, on levels for my developers, level, uh, uh, some shiny stuff for the marketing people, and I need some uh, um, for the decision makers. I need uh, to have uh, an estimate as soon as, uh, as possible. Okay, so you need the logical information that developers uh, have some confidence that it's going to like not drive them crazy to work with it, well, and then it have, uh, could API, fulfill your requirements, right? Yeah. If, if, you, if you show off that you have your uh, API documentation uh, ready, uh, uh, then uh, you're a long way. Uh, uh, that, that convinces my developers that yeah. we have something. A, we have, a, we have a, a, a project definer category that'll come up in a second called project vitality. When was the last commit? How, do, how, do, how does the issue queue get worked? When was the last release? Like really that. great that you said that, okay. like, you know, we didn't discuss this ahead of time, right? You're, you're saying this spontaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying this spontaneously. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. So you need, to con you need to convince developers that it's worth using and it's going to help solve the problems. Marketers need to be convinced that it's shiny and pretty. Yeah. I'm joking, but it's part of it. It's true. And yeah, your decision true. makers need a price point versus business benefits so that they can decide whether to pull the trigger on it or not. Yeah. Right? So at some point, right, up in the mi middle zone here, you, you need to logically convince everyone that it's going to do... Uh, uh. <laughs> if that's somebody's ringtone, I want a copy of it afterwards. <laughs> okay. Right, so you're, so you're building trust, and you're building trust that their thing is going to do it, that they can help you build it right, and then it's going to deliver what you need. So we're really talking about trust building. But trust do in the tech and the product is actually only half the way there. So once you've bought in, once you've you know, bought the technology, signed up for the whole package, um, how do we get to the next step where you want to give back to the community and contribute to, to the project? Uh, when you've convinced me that all the stuff you said before was also was true, and it's really happening now, and it's, uh, it's there, and it's not just a planning or a vision, it's something that, that's there. And that's when, when you want to contribute, uh, at least that's from, uh, okay. from my point. All right. Thank you, Kuhn. That's awesome. So we're using something, or we're building something. Uh, it's really, really easy to contribute if it only does 85% of what we need, and we actually have to build a module, right, and we give it back, because it'll be better when other people get to see it. What other, how do we convert people from running an open social community to like going to a meetup that talks about open social or getting in the issue queue or, 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 or promoting it to, to their peers, right? Like evangelism is, is a really important form of contribution as well. How do, we, how do we build excitement once I'm sitting in there using it every day, once, you know, once my clients are using it? Does anybody have an experience where they just thought that they, were, they needed a website and they found Drupal and all of a sudden you go to DrupalCon and Drupal Jam and all the meetups and like are totally crazy about it? Come on, I've seen... So how did you, like, what drove your passion to be involved in the Drupal community like so many of us are? See? And, 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 and how do we, like, how do we tell, uh, give people a path to contribution there? Developer. Hi, Eric. Is so that on? I'm passionate about code. You're back. About open source. Wait, is this thing on? 
Monsieur. Hello. Eric. Ah. Better. <laughs> this is Eric, developer, passionate about code, passionate about open source. Uh, not contributing right now. <laughs> mm. So, to Taco, uh, I've heard about your project and uh, you've got my attention, but you know, there's got to be a little more, more for me to, to get really interested as a developer, as a single developer not as a, as a company, to contribute to code or documentation or evangelize. So, uh, but the project is definitely out there and uh, gets, there's attention, there's interest. What was uh, that? I'm sorry? What was that last point? Uh, I, I, I've heard about open social and I'm interested in, in this thing. Okay. All right, That's so, yeah. so we're not like, we can figure this out still, right? But, um, and I think there's a really, really, like, this is actually, this leap is the problem that all of open source faces, right? This leap is 90, 95% of people who use our stuff don't contribute, don't come here, don't give code back, don't buy us pizza for a hackathon, right? This is actually a really, really interesting problem. How do we build passion and excitement to be part of something instead of just taking something? So I want to leave that question in the room because it's an important question for yeah. us overall in open source. And I want to jump forward because we've only got about 10 minutes um, to talk about the second part here, clarity. We have, uh, we have uh, several clients and uh, they, 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 they we're dealing with some really complex, interesting uh, problem spaces and solutions, and um, Tracy was racking her brains trying to figure out how to 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 do all that marketing stuff on that side, because we actually do all that stuff: competitive analysis, buyers' journeys, target personas, segmentation, all that fun, awesome, oh, fun, awesome stuff. Um, and you know, so let's talk about CMSs for a second because we all know CMSs. What is a CMS? If you ask Drupal, if you ask Adobe, if you ask Sitecore, if you ask WordPress, if you ask Typo3, you're going to get different answers, right? Um, and we wanted a way to look at this objectively and, and, and compare them objectively to be able to help differentiate and, and talk authentically about a CMS so that we could help promote it, help uh, promote adoption and contribution, help promote sales, and so on. Um, so, very quick overview. The value map, okay, is our tool set to, to put together the information that you need to do this on products that have 700 features. Um, essentially, if you start at the, 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 the smallest atomic unit of the value map, you have a feature, and a feature is something like WYSIWYG, image uploading, um, you know, the smallest thing that you could shut on or off, the smallest thing that you could, that you could install, um, uh, drag and drop something, image upload, the most basic things. So you have a feature. These features fall into categories. Um, now, every system calls their categories different things, and some people don't have categories at all. Um, as open source, <laughs> People, we as geeks, we tend to really care about the features, and so we talk about the smallest things, and we understand that we can build them up into great functionality. Adobe, however, doesn't go anywhere near that stuff, and they say, so we say, geek, selling to geek. Geeks don't know how to sell to businesses. Geek selling to geek. We do left to right and right to left languages. Uh, we have WYSIWYG, you can install the spell checker of your choice and, um, you know, you can use the uh, CK Editor uh, native image upload and it still includes the semantic metadata for the Drupal, you know, entity system and right? Adobe, Adobe says, anybody know what Adobe says besides you? Business-friendly authoring. Oh. <laughs> I understand that. So we came up with feature categories. 
um, because we needed to group all the, the atomic units into universal so that we can make proper comparisons. We currently have, for CMSs, we currently have 23 categories. Um, those boil up into products, so any given product across 23 feature categories has N features sorted into them, and then a value map can have any number of products. That's the simplest view of that thing. What does the value map do? It allows you, when you have these things filled out with some other information around them, it allows you to compare products by feature category, um, ease of implementation, feature by feature, and so on, because it's all mapped in there. Okay? And it allows us, for example, if you take if you take every feature category, every feature, whatever you want, you can make a catalog of marketing assets for these 23 feature categories. We're not, we're not, we're not prioritizing three of them, so we're working with 20. Do we have a case study that touches on everyone? Do we have a sales battle card? Do we have a sales slide? Do we have a how-to and a technical tutorial? Do we have an installation manual? Do we have blog posts? Do we have case studies? Do we have references? Do we have testimonials? Right? So you can build. And you could say all of your marketing assets, when they were written, who wrote them, when they need updating, do we have permission to use them publicly, and so on. So you can use this as a cataloging mechanism. Um, you can use it to model your marketing choices. You can look at what people are um, searching for online, what sort of language, what sort of terms, what sort of priorities you're going to use, based on what your competition is doing. You can decide that Adobe sells to marketers really well, and they do, and you can model what you're doing on what they're doing. Um, and it allows you to assess market signals. So uh, actually, you know, what categories are considered important, what third parties are talking about, what the case studies the competition are publishing, what they're highlighting, what they're bubbling up, what keywords they're using. So the value map allows us to keep track of a lot of things and then extract a lot of really different uh, um, <clears throat> comparisons from it. Um, and then basically, Right, so the benefits are that you get to make clear and informed choices about how you position the thing that you're selling, how you talk about uh, your CMS, um, what sort of actions you're going to take, and what sort of... So production is both what sort of materials are you going to produce, what sort of uh, content, for example, marketing content, but it could also be your choices about what you do feature-wise next, how, how, how you build your product roadmap. So our value map... Um, allows us to do this with clients um, for, for many things, not just the CMS. We've done this for a partner program for a technology organization, uh, and it allowed, us, it allowed us just, you know, with literally four spreadsheets of about, you know, a partner program doesn't have 600 features, right? Like four spreadsheets on about 15 features. Um, it allowed us to completely reposition uh, um, the benefits and the naming and the levels of the partnerships and to suggest changes that, uh, you know, to, to, to make it what they, to, to present it how they understand it should be, right? Yeah, exactly. So. And then we, and then we take that body of work and we build narratives around it. Um, and this is just an example going back to the, um, going back to the equity narrative, um, you know, basically, Taking, uh, taking the exercise, the empathy exercise, taking the the value map or any type of analysis or understanding your your product at a detailed level, and then constructing the the themes around like what kind of narratives you want to be, uh, what kind of narratives you want to be telling right. uh, like to your target audience. It's like a building kit. Exactly, and um, we wanted to sort of stress in 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 this particular moment that when you're building um, when you're building any of your communication, build a blueprint first. Think about the overall themes and narratives that you want to be talking about. Build the outline, build the structure outside of your keynote or, or PowerPoint tool, outside of the blog post. Think about the overall narrative, the arc of your story, and the larger narrative that you want to be talking about. Um, so take a step back and think about those themes. And then this example um, is a canvas that we built when thinking about your contribution narrative. Um, and 
This is the collection of all of the various themes that you need to be thinking about if you want to get contribution to your, pro to your project. Uh, things like, you know, who are you actually trying to get to contribute? What things about your project give off vibrancy signals? Um, why should they contribute? Are you clear about how they can contribute and how it's easy for them and what benefits they get out of that? Um, and things like this. And so if you take the time in a workshop, a brainstorm exercise, or whatever format is the most creative for you, and throw all of these points around and then structure them uh, before you actually get to, to whatever authoring tool you need. Good. Next. Right, so those, those, those are actually, uh, right, I mean, this, this, this is the same stuff here, but like, these tiles can be rearranged and there could be multiple examples, and, and it's the kind of stuff that we're looking for to try and figure out how to convince people to contribute, right, or, or, or adopt a project. And the vibrancy signals we already talked about, but that we know that that's really, really important. Um, and it definitely feeds into why people would, would select your project and, you know. But this is all stuff that, uh, right, it's a constant interesting challenge in, in open source. Um, very quickly, because we're kind of really short on time now, um, building trust, uh, you know, we feel a lot of marketing is like this, right? Um, and so guilty. there's this concept. <laughs> I've that, been guilty of it, marketer. Right, okay, so there's a concept. I remembered to click. There's a concept of trust signals. You really, really have to be technically accurate, right? And you need to talk about things that you can actually do. Um, I think we made this mistake with Drupal 8 um, for about four years because we thought it was coming out tomorrow, and it never was. Um, that was really, really challenging. Um, and um, this thing, amplify the voices of your community, um, I think we should also say celebrate, celebrate success. Um, don't just talk about what you do. You have to understand the context of what other people are doing, and other people's victories are your victories too. People who use the same PHP components that we use who win a project, they're helping us. They're contributing to the same libraries. They're using the same stuff, even if they're not doing Drupal. And we really, really need to be aware that that makes us look authentic. If we genuinely care about open source being proprietary, it is yet another signal, right, that what we're doing is good and valuable. Um, very, very quickly, uh, using all of these tools, we would model uh, content campaigns, taking all of this into account, and, and doing interviews and writing articles and so on. This is not as important to what we're talking about today. Um, I hope we were able to get across the idea that when you operate with empathy, when you're clear about what you're doing, and you can say it clearly, that you can build up trust in an authentic way, um, and then that should help you sell, that should help you grow adoption, that should help you grow uh, uh, contribution. Uh, whatever your communication needs are, we would love to talk with you about what you're up to um, and what we're up to and if there's any intersection there. Um, and we're actually really, really deeply invested in making open source win <laughs> and crush everything else. But no, but we're all friends, right? So. Um, I think we, yes, I'm going to say we have a couple minutes for questions. Thank you so, so, so much for coming, um, and, and thank you to the organizers for inviting us to talk about uh, what we're doing. Yeah.